Welcome kindreds, it's Jessica and this video is kind of a witchcraft book anti-haul video. I have five witchcraft books which I regret buying and I'm going to show you them and talk about my reasons why I don't recommend these books. Fair warning, a couple of you might find this video blasphemous because there are some authors I'm going to talk about who are, I still see being recommended um, for beginners and for intermediate witches all the time. So um, you may not agree with me and that's completely fine. You know, we all need different things at different stages in our journey. But I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I do still see so many books from like the 1990s, 2000s being recommended to beginners. And I feel like we have definitely like moved on from there. And as an elder witch, you know, as someone who's been practicing for a long time now, I feel like it's my responsibility to really kind of keep current with what is out there and also to like look back on the books that perhaps I used, you know, when I was beginning my craft and sort of think, is are these actually still good resources or do we have something better to offer? So I wanted to go there, even though it is like a little bit awkward. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop stalling and let's dive in. First up is the very first witchcraft book I actually bought for myself, Enchanted by Titania Hardy. It was listed in a book catalogue in the staff room at work and it looked so beautiful that I bought it. That was in 1999. I was 21 years old. <laughs> Prior to that, I had only had access to library books on the craft. I still find this book beautiful now, but the reason I regret buying it is that it put me off doing rituals for a few years. It calls for a lot of props, which at that time in my life I just didn't have access to, like a setup of 13 pillar candles, which after the ritual is over you replace with 13 vases of roses. <laughs> it just seemed unachievable to me at that time. Looking back at it now, there's also like a weird, typical for that time, conflation of witchcraft, wicca and druids even, plus no references or context for some of the information shared. This is something I see a lot in witchy books and is an issue with others on this list too. I have kept hold of it for all these years because I plan one day to turn it into an altered book. With that cover, it will be glorious. Next, brace yourself. I have this tiny book, The Truth About Witchcraft, by that most beloved of authors for the solitary practitioner, Scott Cunningham. Published in 2002, this book is a perfect example of why I don't tend to recommend his work to beginners, or anyone. It's presented as a small compendium of witchcraft facts, but is actually a collection of his own opinions about various aspects of the craft, presented as facts. Some of his opinions I'm on board with, like magic being a natural force in the universe. Other facts I have I find more suspect, like when he claims that people using folk magic always bring a morality to it which prevents them from harming others or themselves. I understand why he said this. He wanted witchcraft to be seen in a positive light. But as with all forces, people can and do use magic for all kinds of reasons. There is also, as with a lot of witchcraft books, some dubious history in this book. Being honest, I don't actually rate Scott, Hen Scott Cunningham's books that highly in general. I fully believe that his heart was in the right place though, and I am grateful for hi to him for the part he played in putting witchcraft into the hands of many people who would not have had access to it before he wrote his books, and for his wholehearted belief in the craft. I know people still really love and get a lot out of his books in general. Though I do wonder sometimes whether some of this is nostalgia. I've noticed that people tend to recommend books to beginners which were important books for them on their own path. This next book is an example of how I learned the hard way that this is not necessarily helpful, particularly if you started practicing the craft a couple of decades ago. I was almost afraid to include this book on this list, but here it is, Paul Hooson's Mastering Witchcraft first published in 1970 and still on many people's lists of recommended reading for beginner witches today, including mine up until recently. I remember when I first borrowed this book from the library in my late teens and it blew me away. There was so much practical information in there which I hadn't come across before. I absolutely lapped it up. And although I never actually carved a mandragore, <laughs> I did get into talismans and astrological magic as a direct result of this book. 
However, <laughs> I bought my own copy of this just a couple of years ago to reread as I'm often asked about books for beginners and this was a book I was recommending despite not having read it myself for almost 30 years and well I was shocked at how much of the book seemed far more akin to ceremonial magic rather than witchcraft as I practice it today. I had remembered it very differently and honestly this book has not aged well. The whole chapter on spells for lovers makes almost laughably uncomfortable reading. It's just all so awkward. There is definitely useful information here but I'm taking it off my recommendations for beginners unless the person was specifically looking for a more ceremonial magic approach and even in that case I would share with a caveat that some of this feels very dated and the history portions shouldn't be taken as fact. As a side note, I also reread um, Buckland's complete book of witchcraft, known as Uncle Bucky's Big Blue Book, or just the Big Blue Book, a few years ago too, and that hasn't stood up well to the test of time either, for similar reasons. I borrowed that one from the library, otherwise it would have made this list too. I do take my responsibility for recommending useful books very seriously, which is why I've been doing some rereading, and I know other long-practicing witches feel the same. Over in my Facebook circle, people have shared that they also read newly released beginner books, even though they're far from beginners, as they take their position as elders who can recommend books very seriously. Maybe you feel like this too. Let me know in the comments. And if you have recommendations, I would love to hear them. Phew. Okay, this next one is easier to roast. It's also the newest book on my list, Pop Magic by Alex Kazemi published in 2020. Full disclosure, I actually was sent this to review by the publisher, so technically I didn't buy it, but if I had, I would have regretted it, so I think it counts. It includes sigil and candle magic mostly, but is very light on, well, everything. <laughs> There's a mass of topics in the contents, but each section is incredibly short, some with only a page for the entire topic. Basically, this book is a lot of autobiography with the inclusion of some magic. The magic that is included is mostly new age and chaos magic, with the onus on getting what you want. It is a good example though of how even the worst book has some wisdom to uncover, even if sometimes that's to do with learning discernment. <laughs> One of the difficult things for beginners is that they don't know what they don't know, obviously, so sometimes they can't tell when a book is not great. This is another reason why more seasoned witches can help by providing good recommendations. This book did, however, open my eyes to how some people come to the craft in a very different way from how I did, and it does contain some basic information. Overall, I definitely wouldn't recommend it as a good book for beginners. It reads more like a vanity project for the author than like an actual witchcraft book. Okay, so this last one might upset some people too. It's DJ Conway's Moon Magic. I actually have a soft spot for DJs. I feel like she comes from a similar space of seeing the world through goddess eyes as I do. However, this book is an excellent example of why her work is, well, um, not the best. <laughs> she shares her own version of history as if it is well-established truth and layers in references to information which she presents as facts without anything to back that up. And if you dig deeper, then a lot of what she shares is pure creative fantasy. I love her fantasy history, but it does make it difficult to believe a word she writes. <laughs> and, you know, I object to it being presented as fact when it really isn't. A while back, I had a comment of one on one of my witchy book review videos complaining that the book I was reviewing had misinformation and had not been fact checked. And that comment kind of astounded me because... None of these witchy books are fact-checked. None of them are peer-reviewed before publishing. They're not textbooks. The authors are allowed to present their take. And as with this and all of DJ's books, that take can include dodgy history presented as facts. It's on the reader to pass what is presented, to find if it is true. It would also be on the reader to sue if something in the books caused them harm, goddess forbid. This is another reason for me making this video, to draw attention to the fact that there are lots of books on witchcraft out there which contain dubious information dressed up as fact, and that we have the responsibility as readers and as elder witches who recommend books to try and find and recommend those books which are more helpful than not. Which probably begs the question, how do you know then what is true and what isn't? 
It's an interesting question and one that usually gets answered by an encouragement to cross-reference. So if you find the same information turning up again and again in different books and websites, then it's perhaps more likely to be reliable. Although I found that sometimes misinformation gets shared from a single source, which then gets repeated and repeated like a snowball. So another strategy is to look out for books which include their sources for the information presented. In DJ Conway's book, she does not do that. She does have like a bibliography, but she certainly doesn't like cross-reference the things that she shares in the books with like a source that you can actually look up to verify what is shared. So even if I'd like for it to be true, (laughs) I suspect a lot of it, well, I'm confident that a lot of it is not true. The more recent books on witchcraft do tend to include their sources, at least for like the the historical information, which makes kind of fact checking um, and verifying easier. But there is another way too, and it's the one which I have most faith in. Uh, I basically pass everything that I read through my heart, through my own sense of knowing what is true, and I ask for verification verification from my guides I see how it sits with my own prior knowledge and experience and if it calls to me then I'll test it out for myself you know most things in these books are not like life or death if you test them out although some of Scott Cunningham's herb (laughs) recipes could come under that category perhaps I'm no no libel claims here you know he's lovely (laughs) in this time of facts and external verification my more like esoteric inward looking way of seeking truth might seem kind of outlandish and unreliable but honestly I find it an excellent counterpoint to our patriarchal method of like truth finding and verification. If you enjoyed this video then you may want to check out some of my other witchy book review videos I've got a whole playlist which I'll link somewhere And don't forget to, you know, to leave me a comment letting me know what you think about what I've shared here, whether you have certain books you do still recommend or books that are like more modern that you recommend or books that you really don't recommend. I'd love to hear it and we can have a conversation about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Warmest, warmest blessings and I will see you very soon.